Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today we are going to be doing more marble stuff. Um, I'm glad to see that you guys liked the Blender video last week. I will be doing more of that, but um, I figured it was time to get back to this. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. And before we get started, I should address the mess on my face. Um, you know, uh, quarantine, COVID, whatever. I work from home, my day job. I uh, just work downstairs from here, so... Um, I don't go anywhere, and it's just been a while since I've trimmed this up, so kindly ignore that, and I apologize for the, the crazy beard hair. This is not intentional, it's just laziness. So last time I had this um, elevator that uh, did not really work, and I was a little defeated in the, at the end of the last episode, um, and I basically said I was going to need to go back to the drawing board and come up with a whole new idea. And um, I basically came to the realization that that's quitter talk. Um, and part of the process is, you know, overcoming weird issues. So we've identified issues, let's overcome them. So the elevator had quite a few issues. Um, the, the main issue that it had is that the marbles were not staying on the track. These little things here were just a little too thin and the marbles were um, falling off to the side of them. And so in order to combat that, one, I made the, the gap between just a little bit smaller so the marbles had less room to wiggle around. And then I made the um, spokes, I guess you could call them, a little thing that the marbles catch on, thicker. The initial reason I had them thin is just to um, allow it to come through the platform below and catch the marble. Um, so we're still gonna have to work that part out of it, but now they're thicker and they hold marbles much better. You know, that, that marble's not going anywhere, so it's all good there. The next issue that I had is that the gears really weren't um, spoked right, I guess. They, uh, they had the wrong number of spokes, and so they were kind of catching, and it would kind of get off, and just the chain would not spin very well. So now you can see it turns much more easily. It still catches a little bit, but that's mostly the ones that I have not replaced yet. Um, I, I just had a little bit of a better design for these. So they'll link up, it'll be less pieces to print, it'll work out pretty good. There's still a few issues to work out here. Um, mainly I, I do have the piece designed that will like pick up the marbles and then the marbles will exit from the top. I have those designed, I have not tested them yet, and those certainly will need some revision because those are pretty complicated pieces and they kind of need to work perfectly for the whole track to work. Um, the other issue that I have is that this is not, the chain isn't super easy to get together. I don't know that I'll be able to fix that completely, um, but I redesigned how these uh, walls clamp together. You can see that I just have little pins that slide through the whole thing here. And um, that way that you can kind of assemble the chain with one of these halves off and then put the half on, which is nice. So let's go ahead and leave the elevator for now um, and move on to some of the other moving pieces that need to work. So um, the first thing, uh, I've, I've talked a bit about the, the pterodactyl thing that's gonna be flying around and hopefully knocking marbles off. Um, and I haven't really explained how it works. And I've noticed some people in the comments asking for how it works. So this is more or less what it's going to be. It's just, I mean, the little propeller basically. And I, I just have this printing where the, the propeller can go off. And so it, it allows it to turn, will be motorized in the end. And it'll pretty much go about here and just stand um, in between these, spin right here. And and most likely what's gonna happen is this design is gonna be like a tree, and then the spinning thing is just gonna have a pterodactyl, like a little pterodactyl model on the end of it that will come over the track right about here and knock the marbles off, hopefully into this um, funnel. So, you know, this just spins. Like I said, there's still some stuff to work out there, but um, just testing that it has room to spin, and I think all looks good there. So where most of my uh, time aside from the elevator went is the T-Rex mouth thing here, because that's another uh, very big part of the track in general. And you can see that basically what I had is, you know, you can just push it down and that didn't really change. I just needed to, to design the mechanism that will allow a motor to rotate this. 
So let's try, and I've got a few printed parts here. Let's try and install it and see how it goes. So you can see on this little piece that I printed, the main addition is just a little arm that will allow it to, you know, push up and down. Okay, so it's a little stiff, um, and that I kind of made it that way on purpose. The the problem with printing things out of PLA that move um, is that. It, it grinds together and eventually wears out. So I make it a little tight to begin with so it has a little more longevity, but as it wiggles a little more, it will um, loosen up. So the next part of this is the off ramp where the uh, marble will fall basically through the T-Rex mouth here. Um, I put a little slot in there to allow the, um, I don't even know what you would call this, the drive shaft to um, move through there. And then there's a little wheel on the bottom that the shaft will attach to, and this wheel will ultimately be what does the spinning. Well, to no one's surprise, uh, <laughs> it just isn't working. Um, I think the mechanics are there. From what I was able to see, it, it works. The problem is that this, we had a lot of printer issues, um, just the stands were not a great idea, but once again, those aren't gonna be a part of the final product. Um, things are just breaking and not holding together. So what I need to do now is um, reprint a couple things, get a boatload of glue, um, and just glue all this together so I can force this thing to, or force force this thing to be able to be tested is really what it is. Um, like I said, from what I've been able, if I had like six hands, this wouldn't be a problem, but I do not have six hands. So um, from what I've been able to test with two hands, it seems good but um, we all know that that's not gonna last. So, um, we're gonna leave the monstrosity in front of us right here for now. I'm gonna go into Blender and show you guys real quickly the idea that I have for getting the marbles on and off of the elevator. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes covering all sorts of different skills. There's a premium membership that gives you full access to the classes, so if you're trying to pick up a new creative skill, Skillshare can help you with all of the skills you want to learn. It's a great place to fuel your creativity and point you in the right direction. For example, I've struggled a lot with a mind that does not want to cooperate with me, and I don't talk about it much, but it's something that I think is very important um, to not only learn about, but to try and improve and better yourself. And what do you know, Skillshare even has classes for subjects like that. Um, and the, these type of things can be really hard to talk about. The new big one that they have is the Ultimate Self-Care Playbook, Discover and Nurture Your Centered Self by Jonathan Van Ness. Um, he's such a fun personality. Also, I know that a lot of people with 3D printers want to learn how to 3D model, and there is a plethora of 3D modeling courses for a wide variety of programs like Blender, Maya, ZBrush, and even CAD programs. So whether you're trying to learn something new or improve your knowledge on an existing skill, Skillshare is an extremely useful tool. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. All right, here we are in Blender. Um, I wanted to show off this little T-Rex piece a little bit better since uh, we had one of these pieces break and I just need to reprint some stuff that I won't have time to do in this video, so um, at least you guys can get a decent look at it here. So here is the little jaw part that will move and it will um, come down to about this position and then here is this little arm that will connect to the pole down here. So I'll quickly just hide this other position of these things so you can see. This is basically the up position. So this is when marbles will be able to roll across and then if I go back, hide the up position ones, you can see that here is what it's like in the down position where the marble will fall onto the secondary track and it will basically move the arm down. And what will actually do that is this here, as this spins around and see there, it'll come to the, the bottom position. But even when it's in this position over here, this will still have enough room to go over and grab that, hopefully. And so as this spins around, this will move up and down. So I just need to basically figure out a way to attach the, um, 
the motor to this, which won't really be a problem because we have a bunch of room down here. The other thing that I really wanted to show you guys was um, kind of what I'm thinking as far as the marbles getting onto the elevator and then um, getting off again because that's a pretty important part of it and will also be one of the more mechanically complex parts, I think. So, um, by the way, here's the new uh, piece that will hold the marble. So as you can see, it's quite a bit thicker. Um, it pretty much takes up the whole area between these two walls. So that kind of runs into a problem with this um, very last piece where the marbles fall into it. And I think ultimately what I'm just gonna do is let the marble fall right into the, the elevator. And the where it goes in, there should be enough room that um, the, the next spoke in line will just catch it. And since it's angled slightly, if there's a spoke right there when it hits, it'll just kind of wait until the spoke passes and it'll roll onto the next one, hopefully. Like I said, uh, untested, but that's kind of where we're going with it. I haven't made the piece, but it's basically just going to be like the last one and it'll just end right here. Nothing crazy going on with that one. But up here, I have done some work and this one's, it's a little iffy. I put another um, one of the little platforms here just to kind of see where it would rotate. Um, and this one's going to be kind of weird because the marble's going to be upside down and right as it comes around the curve. So I've got this little piece here that will hopefully bump the um, marble out. There should be enough room that this can kind of squeak past, hopefully. If not, I might just put a little slot. We'll have to see. Um, but then hopefully the marble just kind of rolls out. I might have to put a wall here to make sure that it doesn't uh, fall off, you know, this side. But it, and then if as long as it just gets out here, it'll definitely start rolling down the track. And then this little slope here will give it some momentum as it goes, which will also be nice because this area is somewhat flat. So, um, you know, if a marble doesn't have a lot of momentum, it might sit up there for a long time. But with that little ramp, it should should get it going. But we're getting there slowly, but surely we're getting there. Then quickly, um, we're getting to the point that I need to start creating the motor mounts and uh, get the electronics going because once I am at the point that the mechanics seem to work as I'm just moving them around with my hands, then we move right into the electronics and making sure that they work um, with motors attached. I have very little experience with electronics and even less with motors in general. Um, if you uh, have done projects like this, uh, robotics, anything like that, um, and have suggestions for what motors to get. I am definitely open to suggestions right now. I'm probably thinking something like this that um, I mean, they're basically just DC motors that are geared, right? But um, I think those will have enough power to turn it hopefully um, and They'll give me enough control because really all I need to do is just turn them one one direction and They are not that hard to control with an Arduino, which is what I'm gonna probably be using for the brains of all of it um, and likely what we're looking at is three motors total. So, um, and these are nice and cheap, so money's not uh, a problem there. But like I said, I don't know a ton about this. So um, yeah, give me your suggestions. The only other thing I can think of is if those are not strong enough, um, I may have to go with uh, something a little more like one of these stepper motors. And I know those are a, um, a little more pricey and a lot more complicated to run, but um, I know they can get the job done because I mean, most of the printers we have run off of these things anyway. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. But like I said, I'm pretty bad with this stuff. So uh, people who have more experience, uh, let me know in the comments. Well, that is it for this one. Um, I promise this is going somewhere. Um, and like I say in every one of these videos, this isn't really what I'm good at. There's a reason I don't do this stuff normally. Um, I'm definitely not a mechanical engineer. So uh, we're just kind of rolling with the punches as it goes. And there's a lot of punches. Let me know what you think down in the comments and if you have any ideas to help me salvage this um, because I sure need the help. But in the meantime, um, thank you for watching the video. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring the video and allowing me to um, put a lot of time and effort into something like this because this would not normally be worth it for um, an unsponsored video. Well, thank you guys for watching and until next time, keep creating.